if some of these reports are right about potentially a very short one uh, to the middle of November mm -hmm. is to get this withdrawal bill through. I is it petulant, do you think, on the, on the part of Boris Johnson to be holding it back as he is at the moment? I think it is petulant. I mean, like, let's be absolutely clear. I think MPs were completely right to say we shouldn't be bounced into scrutinising this bill in three days. It uh, has huge implications for the country and critically, Boris Johnson's version of the withdrawal agreement is different from Theresa May's version because it paves the way to a harder Brexit. So it was absolutely right of them to say we need longer. And quite frankly, the blame lies with the Prime Minister for throwing his toys out the pram and pausing the bill. If, following that logic, the bill does come back next week and that's the purpose of a short extension, do you trust MPs to make sound and wise use of that time? Or do you think there'll be wrecking amendments aplenty uh, and the whole thing will unravel? Well, so I don't think there'll be wrecking amendments. I think if you think back, the bill got through second reading, but there wasn't a majority in support of that bill. And actually, a lot of the MPs that voted for it were very On clear... On uh, uh, No, just second reading. They were very clear that the purpose there was, was to... Well, there was a majority of 30 for it on the second reading, but then it was the, the way they intended to manage the business. Yeah, so for them it was critically in principle. They weren't supporting the bill and they were very clear that they wanted the chance to scrutinise and they wanted the chance to amend. And the reality is, I believe that when MPs look at the bill and the implications of this version of the withdrawal agreement, I don't believe there'll be a majority at the end of this. There ah. won't be a majority for third reading. Do you think, Miata, that uh, effectively this situation that we saw when there were attempts to, to either come forward with a previous vote of no confidence, government and national unity, some people were talking about. The failure of that is a rather negative single, a signal to people who think the opposition are going to get their act together. Well, look, I think it was difficult and, you know, I don't think any party has been sort of, you know, is blazing glory through this process. But, I mean, let's be clear, the reason why the opposition did not want a vote of no confidence is because they prioritised taking no deal off the table and that was completely right. I do, however, think that, you know, if, and it looks like an extension will be granted, that position now becomes untenable because we have a minority government but a prime minister that is unwilling or seems unable to act in a way that a minority government must act in order to get business done, to reach across the aisle, to build coalitions. And as soon as that's the case, there are loads of issues. Put Brexit aside, big issues for the country, an economy not working for everyone, the housing um, crisis all left to the wayside, and that is unforgivable.